Hello, I am Ahmed, and in this video, we are going to talk about T beams, connected beams to the slab, and how they would affect the design of the uh, beam element. In this example, which is the continuum of the previous example, we will deliver the loads from the slab to the beam or to the critical beam, and then we design the beam accordingly. Let's do so. Coming back to the previous example, we had this uh, uh, slab, which was uh, for a residential building, and we designed the slab itself. Now we are going to design the beam, which is uh, connected to the slab. So in the previous example, we determined the height of the slab to be 200 millimeter. And in this example, we assume that the height of the beam is 500 millimeter, for example. The critical beam here will be the middle beam, as far as it's taking the maximum load from both sides. And also we can uh, assume that the loads are coming according to the tributary area or tributary length, which is half of 3.5 meters from one side, half of 3.5 meters from the other side. Again, if instead of the beams we had walls, then the middle one would take uh, more load than half of 3.5 meters from each side. So in that case, we had to assume that we are dealing with a three spans beam. Uh, and here, if you have a load coming to the top of these two spans, then this will be three over eight QL if this is L and if this is also L and here this is Q and this was 10 Q L over 8 and this is also 3 over 8 Q L something like that as a result we can see that it is uh, more than uh, Q L over 2 plus Q L over 2 which is 8 over 8 Q L also if you have plenty of uh, continuous beams then this uh, assumption of distributing the load according to the tributary length would be more valid. Uh, some engineers would assume that, for example, 5 to 10 percent is the distribution of the load because of continuity. That is also a good assumption. For example, you take half of the 3.5 meters from top, half of 3.5 meters from the bottom of this beam, and then you assume that the a value of one point 0 0.5 or 1.1 should be applied because of the continuity of the slab. That is also a good assumption. In this example, we assume that the, the continuity is not considered and half of the load from each side is coming to the main or to the middle beam. So first of all, we need to have the uh, ideal beam. As far as we have the columns here and here, so we can assume that we have two supports 1.8 meters as cantilever or overhang and 5.2 meters as the uh, span of the element for the beam uh, we are talking about the middle beam which is with 200 millimeter thickness of the slab and if we assume that the overall height of the beam is going to be 500 millimeters so this will be 300 millimeter and the width as we had it in the previous example of the beam is 250 millimeter now we need to calculate the load which is coming to to the beam as far as we have two different loads here the dead load is one in the balcony it is also one kilonewton per square meter live load here or q will be two kilonewton per square meter here and 2.5 kilonewton per square meter in the balcony side as a result the overhang is loaded more than the other side now let's calculate the load coming to the beam from here we can assume that half of the spacing of the beams 1.75 meters and from top also 1.75 meters as a result for the main beam or main span 5.2 meters span 
the dead load will be 1 kN per square meter times 1.75 meters plus 1.75 meters, which will be 3.5 kN per meter. Also, we have the weight of the slab, which was 0.2 meters times 25 kN per cubic meter, and now it is uh, splitting with 3.5 meters coming from 1.75 from each side. It will be 17.5 kN per meter. And live load, which is 2.5 kN per square meter times 3.5 meters for the balcony and 2 kN per square meter times 3.5 meters for the main span. This will be 7 kN per meter and the other one will be 8.75 kN per meter. The only missing part is the breadth or this uh, 300 by 250 millimeter rectangle which is as the self weight of the beam it is 0.3 times 0.25 meters times 25 kilonewton per cubic meter as the uh, unit weight of concrete 1.875 kilonewton per meter now we have the loads separately calculated for this example and now let's sketch the beam in total the permanent load in the main span will be 3.5 plus 17.5 plus 1.875 so 3.5 17.5 1.875 kN per meter uh, the same also for the other side for the overhang and then we can calculate the or sketch the live load which is 7 kN per meter for the main span and a little bit more for the overhang side the main span is 5.2 meters and the overhang is 1.8 now we are going to calculate the maximum bending moment maximum positive and negative bending moment of this section so we can uh, write the combination first and calculate it for the combination but especially when we are using for example the software or application we might just go through the automatic load combination but it should be noticed that uh, some loads are affecting in favorable of the structure that should be considered as the favorable action so in this uh, case uh, if you model this uh, beam or column or the whole structure with the uh, application without noticing this one then there might be a little bit uh, underestimating of the uh, ULS case let's do it in another way that might be a little bit easier and fast hand calculation and see the results I will name A, B and C so the load between A and B is making the positive bending moment between A and B. And the load in the BC is making the negative bending moment at point B. Also, the moment, the effect of this load in the entire AB is going to be negative. So the method here is a little bit a slightly uh, uh, different from the accurate calculation, but it is precise enough to be considered as the method of the calculation so i will sketch the beam with loading only the main span as q let's go with the parameters plus the same beam but this time with the load in the um, overhang a b c a b c uh, it is easier if we go with parameters here l and let's say a here also l and also a bending moment diagram for this beam and bending moment diagram also for the other beam. for the first one it's very easy ql square divided by eight and it's positive and in the overhang it will be zero for the overhang loaded the moment diagram will be q a square divided by two and then it's coming to zero as a line in the bending moment diagram and as we can see it's completely negative so in the combination of these two the maximum positive bending moment will be close to the center of span a b 
it is not uh, exactly in the middle but it is precise enough so m positive will be qls square 8 divided by 8 which is positive and here in the center it will be qa square divided by 4 which is negative minus qa square divided by 4 and the maximum negative bending moment in the first one is 0 and in the second one is qa square divided by here we can see that if we combine these two structures together, the overhang is decreasing the bending moment. This action is called favorable action. As a result, when we want to calculate the bending moment in ULS, we need to take it as favorable action. So according to these equations, let's calculate the maximum bending moment. So Q for the dead load, it was 22.9. For both main A, B, beam and also cantilever B, C. Q live, it was 7 kN per meter for A, B. And it was 8.75 for the other side. And also positive bending moment in A, B. Maximum was Q, L, S square divided by 8. And negative one was Q, A, S square divided by 4. And for BC, maximum negative bending moment was QA squared divided by 8. So we have uh, dead load and we have live load calculated according to the loading. Now I can calculate maximum bending moment in AB for the positive moment and negative moment. So M at the mid span of AB will be 22.9 kN per meters times. 5.2 meters s squared divided by 8 and it will be 77.4 kN meter and for the negative sign it will be 22.9 kN per meter a is 1.8 meters divided by 4 which is negative 22.9 1.8 divided by 4 minus 18.5 kN meter also for the uh, this is for g or for dead load for q live load the positive will be 7 kN per meter times 5.2 meters s squared divided by 8 23.7 kN meter and 8.75 kN per meter times 1.8 meter s squared divided by 4 which is negative minus 7.1 kN. Now, when you want to combine these according to the code, we need to consider the uh, given equation in uh, Eurocode 1990, uh, considering the national annex that your project is located. So, MULS will be the maximum of 1.35 KFI times G superior, plus 0 0.9 G inferior. G superior refers to the unfavorable action and G inferior is representing the uh, favorable action. Here, as far as bending moment due to the overhang is negative, it means that it is reducing the bending moment of the maximum positive between A and B. As a result, it is better if we decrease it less if we multiply by 1.35, we are increasing more. So it is going to be inferior or favorable action. Also 1.15 KFI G superior plus 0.9 G inferior plus 1.5 KFI times Q. Here also we can see that in the combination of permanent action and the variable action here as live load, we can see that we have superior and inferior. The only thing is that in Eurocode, the value of 1.15 is 1.35. But for example, in Finnish National Annex, it is uh, taken as 1.15. If you are designing somewhere else, you need to take uh, care of that. You need to select the proper partial factor according to the National Annex of the local project. So here MULS will be the maximum of 1.35 as far as it's a residential building. We assume that it's with the consequent class of 1. 
1.35 times then the moment due to the unfavorable action which is 77.4 kilonewton meter plus 90 percent times inferior which is minus 18.5 kilonewton meter also 1.15 times 77.4 kilonewton meter plus 90 percent of minus 18.5 kilonewton meter plus 1.5 times now 23.7 and then as far as the live load can be excluded it means that we assume that the residential building is under its maximum live load but the balcony is completely free so as a result we do not take that minus 7.5 in our calculation 1.35 88 kilonewton meter and the other one will be 107.5 kilonewton meter so m in uls for this beam will be 108 approximately kilonewton meter we can write it down med as the design value and this is for positive for the negative the same concept the same procedure m negative will be the maximum of as we can see here with the main span loading the bending moment in bc is completely zero so now the only bending moment is coming from qa squared divided by two and all is unfavorable we do not have any favorable action here minus qa squared over two is the equation let's calculate with this case so m negative is qa squared divided by 2 for the dead load it will be 22.9 kilonewton per meter multiplied by 1.8 meter squared divided by 2 37.1 kilonewton meter and for the live load it will be 8.75 kilonewton per meter times 1.8 meters 14.2 kilonewton meter here we do not have any inferior because we do not have any favorable action all are unfavorable so m u l s for negative will be the maximum of 1.35 times 37.1 kilonewton meter and 1.15 37.1 kilonewton meter plus 1.5 14.2 kilonewton meter which is 64 kilonewton meter as a result med negative will be 64 kilonewton meter this is the calculation of maximum positive and negative moment to be considered for the design so this was the first part of t beam calculation we calculated what would be the maximum uh, bending moment due to uh, the load coming to the selected beam in this example we assume that we are going to design the critical beam which is in the center and we assume that the slab over this beam is transferring the load with hinge not with a rigid stiffness in terms of translating the load uh, also we consider the effect of favorable and unfavorable action so we assume that the load is on the overhang and in the main beam and how we need to consider each load case to have the maximum bending moment for the design value thank you for watching see you in the next video